Yay, 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 yay. Hello and welcome. We are the Sisters of the Holy Fiber. My name is Devin. I'm also known as Rambunctious Sky on Ravelry, and you can find me on Instagram as Dynamic Devin. Who are you? I'm Heather, also known as Tiny Kiwi on Ravelry. So send us a message. And join we us like, while we craft. Yeah. And chat. And chat. Lots of chatting. Yes, all the chatting. So uh, winter holidays happened, and then there was a... Uh, Oh, things are falling already. Welcome to the show. Hi. Why things fall? Um, so th th there was a big fire in my area, and now there's mudslides. Yay. So, um, yeah. Yeah. It's been an like interesting holiday season. But I'm happy to be here. It's the circle of life. And it also meant that I could make a sweater. <laughs> so this Yay. is pretty much what I did. While I couldn't leave my house. Yeah. Yay. It's done. Hot diggity. Yay. So, obviously, this is, let me, the beauty yeah. here. The show color. There we go. You so, know what? It reminds me of, like, a sort of like a sailor's sweater, you know? Like, No? Sort of like the Fair Isle stuff or whatever, but not Fair Isle or... Uh, oh, a fisherman's jumper? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I those... Just, I see them with a lot of rolled collars like that, like uh, actual working. Mm -hmm. So. Mm, I see what you mean. Yeah, this collar style. Yeah. Yes. So, this is Lumberjack, is the pattern. It's by mm. Marzena Kolzek. Sorry, Marzena, uh, for my pronunciation of your name. This is, the yarn is Lana Gatto VIP in color 12942 Kiwi. Um, <laughs> some things about the pattern, now that it's done. Uh -huh. Number one. These are, it's a top-down raglan. These raglan increases. Mm -hmm. In the pattern, it states to do a lifted make one going right, knit one, mm -hmm. Lifted, make one going the other direction. Mm -hmm. So if you do that, this stitch pretty much doesn't have any stitch left in it because you've yanked the yarn over to do your increases. Mm -hmm. So I found that not did not work at all. So for me, I did the I did a lifted increase on one side, and on the other side, I did a yarn over to add in extra yarn. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when I came back, I would purl it through the back loop to twist it so you can't see. Mm -hmm. But um, if I did this again, I would do the increases differently. But I'd figure something else out because uh -huh. um, that didn't work. And it, um, it just kind of bubbles a little bit. Also, uh -huh. the sweater hasn't been blocked yet. Uh, uh -huh. So it does need to be blocked. So what else? Oh, the way the pattern is written. A lot of people try and do things without seaming because they don't like seaming. And I just wanted a pattern that I could just do. And I liked how this pattern looked. So that's why I used it. However, um, when you don't, when you're trying to avoid seams, I think that sometimes you don't end up with something that looks as good. So the collar is knit by picking up stitches along this side and huh. then the back actually was a provisional cast on so you pick up these stitches and uh, so there's actually no separation between the collar and the main body well uh -huh. what it does on the person you can see it's kind of doing it here is that it bubbles uh -huh. and i think it would look better if the collar had been knit separately and sewn down Mm. I don't know because I've never done that mm. with a shawl collar, but uh, I'm about to in my whip when I talk about that later. <laughs> so okay. it's kind of cool because I'm doing two shawl collar sweaters in a short period of time. So I can try the other method and see what I like. Cool. The recipient really likes it. 
And uh, we just went to Sequoia and she said she was warm. And that was my goal. Yay. Yay. It's done. It looks nice. So I'm also, you know, we'll see how it, it uh, holds up over time. But uh-huh. um, I had a really good time making this for Terry, and I already want to make another sweater for her. So that's something that will happen at some point. But I have to use cashmere, apparently, because she's like, yes, soft like this is good. Soft like this is good. I'm like, okay. Uh, yes, I opened that can of worms for myself, didn't I? Yeah, you kind of did. I kind of did. <laughs> hey, if it gets her to wear it, you know, like, it's wearability. Yeah, you know, and that's what I want. And she wore it, and she really liked it, and all And oh no, you'll have to work in cashmere. Oh, oh it was such a travesty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, so it's done. All done. Yay! Do you have any whips? I mean, sorry, foes? FOs? Uh, Did you finish anything? Nope. Moving right along. Uh, I'm going to just talk about my next one then because I'll be on the shawl collar kick. Go for it. So um, I'm going. I'm making Bingham, which is by Michelle Wong. And... Um, it's from the capsule collection for Brooklyn Tweed. This is the winter 2017. And let me see if I can find a picture without pattern details. Okay, here we go. I fell in love with this sweater the moment I saw it, and I wanted to make it real bad. Real bad. It's all that cables. Mm. <sighs> all the cables and then like the shawl collar because I really want to make something with a shawl collar I've wanted to make something with a shawl collar for a while and it's just such a deep like it just looks so squishy Mm. yeah it does Mm. and Michelle Wong like how can I not um so uh so that's my other whip and I actually started with the uh, sleeves because I wanted my gauge to kind of even out uh, and get get used to working with the bulky yarn. So it's knit in um, Brooklyn Tweed Quarry, which is this yarn. And it's a woolen spun yarn. So this looks like, so, so you see it and you're like, oh, that would weigh a certain amount. And then you hold it and you're like, it's like holding a cloud. Yeah. It's so light because this yarn is woolen spun. Mm -hmm. And it looks like a single ply. So they they make like these yarns that are um, uh, single ply uh, bulky weight. Like kind of like Mm -hmm. almost a roving yarn. Yeah, that's what it looks like. But it's actually three plies. Mm. It's so cool. I love this yarn. Yeah. Uh, Some people, FYI, don't like this yarn for two reasons. One of two reasons. Number one, there are twigs in it. I just pull them out as they go. I think it's super adorable. It came from a sheep. I am okay with that. Uh, But some people don't like that. But they do that because uh, they don't chemical wash their yarn. So I'm okay with that. I'll pick out the twigs. No problemo. Uh, And another reason that some people don't like it is uh, you can just pull this yarn apart. So I could just take it and pull and it would come apart. So some people who have very tight tension when they're knitting find that the yarn breaks while they're knitting. Just a couple of caveats because some people, you know, everybody different stripes. Okay. Oh yeah. One of my uh, knitting buddies, she knits really tight. I mean, and there's really, it doesn't matter what she does with her needle size. She just knits tight and she knows that. So she works with it. Right. And so like this yarn, it it would probably just be frustrating. Oh yeah. The Brooklyn tweed line, you know, and so why, you know, but clearly like I, I like yarns like this, but I also knit with cashmere. I just finished a sweater with cashmere. Like, wow. You know, 
Just each, fine. Each has their own place. True. So this is the yarn I'm using. I knit both of the sleeves already. So here's the first sleeve. Yay. It's a sleeve. Yep. Yeah. But I really wanted to do the sleeves first because I hate getting done with the fun part and then having the sleeve left. I feel ya. Oh, and clearly this is a pieced garment. Comes in pieces. Mm. Here's the other sweater. I wasn't, or other sweater. Sleeve. I wasn't lying. Hold, hold them together. I was or just going to say, I was just, I, was, I have to hold them together. <laughs> you don't believe me, do you? Yes, I have one sleeve and give me a moment and here's another sleeve. <laughs> All right. Two sleeves. All right. Proof's in the pudding. Um, so those are the sleeves and then I did start working on the body. So I am doing the fun cable -y part now. Oh, yay. Looks yes. nice. Good <laughs> Sorry, what? I said a good stitch definition looks like. Yes. Oh, it's just, she is just so good with cables. I yeah. just C cable goddess. Yes. Um, just like some of the stuff that I would not have thought of doing, but totally works and it looks mm -hmm. great, obviously. So um this yarn is uh Brooklyn Tweed Quarry in the Moonstone colorway. And in reading about their quarry line, they named them after all uh, stones. And so this one um, has little tiny bits of blue. I don't know if that's going to focus. It has like little tiny stripes of blue, just like every once in a while. It's gorgeous. Yeah. So pretty. Yeah, the, the photograph shows it much better. It's really pretty. Yeah. I just. Just like a little surprising pop of color. It's really good. Yeah. So this is mostly what I've been working on. I am in Harry Potter Knit Crochet House Cup. I have not like put in my name for an owl for, or anything. I just couldn't get anything that I wanted to make right now to like go together to fit into the house cup package. And yeah. I just was like, you know what? I'm just going to cast on what I want to cast on and I'm going to turn it in for a class and I'm going to get yardage points and I'm going to try and finish it by the month it's done, but I'm probably not going to make it. And Oh, well, yep. I just, I had thought about it first. I was like, I put this project and this project together because this is a bulky weight sweater. I didn't feel like it was an owl worthy project for me. So mm -hmm. then I was like, well, then I'm going to have to put in another project and like, yeah, too much work. Way too much work. And anyway, so um, unfortunately, I was just like, you know what? I'm just not going to do it. I'll do a mission this term and smart. Done. Yep. Uh, so that is my main whip. It's my only whip. <laughs> my main my main whip you know I am just not a multi I just like want this I'm just gonna knit on this it's what I want so yeah I get too frustrated at things I I I can't I don't know yeah I have to set things aside and become okay with failure for a little while before I can touch things again you know I have a sweater right now in timeout yeah and it's been in timeout probably for six months. And it's because I messed up a direction. So it's a, a bottom up and I messed up like an increase thing. So this, all of this needs to be ripped out and redone. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I care. So I think I might rip it out while re-knitting it into something else because that would make me feel better and then I wouldn't have to wind it. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do about it yet. I also think I yeah. just don't like the project anymore. Anyway, clearly, since I haven't dug it out, I'm not that into it. Yeah, I'm just I feel not yeah. that into you. Sweater project. 
Yeah. So anyway, tell me what you're working on. Well, I started this as something, well, it originally started as um, something to have on hand to teach people how to knit. But my regular project was driving me a little crazy, and I just needed something to knit on. So I just kept going. Oh, wow. Look at you. Uh, so now I have basically almost the backside of a sweater vest. So maybe I'll make a vest. <laughs> you did. I have, I, I have plenty of the yarn. It's this horrible 80s orange, you know. And I think it, not 80s, but 70s. Um, I, it might actually be from the time period. Cause like, let me show you the, this is like yarn that one of my knitting buddies gave me. Look, look at this, um, nice band, you nice. know, it's uh -huh. like Here falling we, so, apart, old and yellow. So it might actually be from the seventies. Here, wait, can you show the band again and hold it for just a second? I want, I just, it's in two pieces. It's like falling apart. Is that glimmer full? Glimmer? Yeah. Glimmer. Let's see. Hold on. Yeah. Glimmer fluff. Glimmer fluff. Yeah. Yes. What's the... It, uh, has, it has a silver overtone. What's the fiber content? Uh, it's, it's artificial as far as I remember. Hold on. Let me double check. It's kind well, of hard when it's in two pieces. Well, I guess there goes the... Uh, prospect of huh. over dyeing it that was going to be my solution for you oh yeah no uh it is crestland which is a registered trademark okay yeah uh-huh sure i have no idea what that is 60 percent crestland and a 40 percent nylon yarn color is rust i actually you know i like oranges I um, think it's okay. I like it, but it is very 70s, you know? Oh, it, yeah. It's very much that... That, um, that color. Yeah, and that kind of shag carpet look, you know? Because yeah. of the... I don't know if you can tell the silver overtones. Oh, I see it a little bit. Yeah. You're right, it's like, yeah. It's almost like the uh, body itself is orange, and then it has, like, a silver halo. Mm-hmm. Um, but it drapes really nice, and it's uh -huh. super hella soft. Like, it feels like it'd be a comfy, like, around-the-house thing. Yeah. So even if I don't wear it out, I might still do it. Because, you know, uh, I have tons of this yarn. And um, the sign that I made, I don't know if you remember it, about learning how to knit, you know. and uh -huh. um, It got kind of messed up. Um, being in my bag, it got kind of beat up, so I just had to get rid of it. Um, and I haven't made a new one. And honestly, I just don't have the time and patience really, like, right now to yeah. be putting into that kind of effort. Um, you can do it again if, when you feel like it. Yeah, and, like, uh, if people ask, I will always be willing. Like, I had, I had one, I was knitting at the bagel shop, and one little girl was like, she just stopped in her tracks and she was pointing at me and she said, Mommy, look what she's doing. It was like, <laughs> it was like, look at the freak. What's she doing? It's crazy. And her I mom's want like, to be. I want to be. Yeah. And, uh, and her mom's like, you can do that. And so I said, yeah, you can learn how to do this. It's not, you know, it's not, it's not that hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would have offered to show her, but her parents were like kind of leaving and I was hungry. So I was. Yeah kind of hangry at the moment and not the best you know yeah, yeah. Me, so I just I didn't say anything but yeah. hopefully I encouraged somebody a little bit to be a little bit weird like hey look oh, at the blue hair girl. Yay. So, yeah so that was fun well uh, um my co-workers a couple of my co-workers want to learn how to knit so mm -hmm. we have a coffee thing scheduled so nice. I'm like they're like you'll teach us for free and I'm like yeah I don't yeah. care I know, like, we want to convert as many people as possible. Come on now. They're like, you made that sweater? And I'm like, if it's knitwear, I made it. If I'm wearing yeah. it and it's knitted, it, I made it. Yeah. I don't wear machine. I don't wear machine-made knitwear. Not even my socks. <laughs> no, I still have cotton socks. Oh, I'm sure. But 
so that's one thing I'm working on. That's um, really cool. You have made a lot of progress. You should totally yeah. make that into a vest. Yeah, totally. Uh, I took it off the needles. You know, I threaded a, a piece of yarn through it and took it off the needles to see how long it was. It needs to be a little bit longer because, you know, I didn't plan on making it into anything. So right. it curls at the bottom, you know. Yeah. Um, so I'll either have to put an edging or just, you know, let it curl. So it needs yeah, to be a Yeah, exactly. Like, if you're wearing it around the house, who cares? Exactly. You know, it's basically trash yarn that someone should have thrown away in the 70s. So I'll just keep using it. <laughs> or that somebody should not have made. Yeah, well, that too. Uh, well, definitely shouldn't have kept it for a few decades. Uh, <laughs> Stash. Speaking of keeping things for a few decades, okay, I, before I actually sewed this thing up, I wanted to get you to look at it and s understand what I was talking about. This okay. is the dishcloth-y thing. Yeah. So here it is, uh, the way it is. Yeah. You know, I've got enough to bind off, you know, I've bound off already. Uh, I, I've got enough to seam it. Right. Um, but I also have some, I think, purple leftover so I could make it like regular dishcloth size and keep going mm -hmm. um or I could sew it all the way around and just have it be like a um what do you call it pot holder yes trivet is the word I was thinking of but uh, I was like there's another word there is but I could also just sew up two sides that you could actually put your hand in and use it for like wiping surfaces and stuff uh I would like if you just bound off and then I can use it for what I want by folding it. Okay. So just, it's already, it's already bound off. So all I have to do is cut the yarn. I left it on because I figured I'm seaming it. So. All done. Alrighty. Sounds good. Yeah. I use the one that you made me all the time and the little nubblies are so good. It's so good. I need to wash it actually because it's kind of dirty. Sorry, what? I said, speaking of nubblies. I found uh, the scrubby one. I told you I made one out of scrubby yarn a while ago, and I couldn't find it. So I was digging through my stuff, and I found it. Hey, scrubby yarn. Yeah, and so now I'm actually using it, so it's slightly damp. But um, I don't know if you can tell. It's got, like, little loopity doos Well, hold it's, it still. I'm trying. There we go. Yeah, it's real fuzzy, but that's okay. Yeah, it's really hard to tell. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's like a bit that's loose or something. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you can see the little fingery yes. thing coming yeah. off of it. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it feels kind of plasticky. It's not too rough though. Like um, uh, the plastic, uh, it's like plastic steel wool. What do they call that? Scotch Bright. Uh, it's not as rough as Scotch Bright. Okay, yeah. But, but um, I used it to clean a couple of things, and it didn't uh, scrape the um, nonstick coating. Oh, and it, But it was still good enough to get, like, residue off. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm glad I finally dug it out and using that now. I told you about my new plan, right, with the dishes. Did I tell you about this? Yes, but you didn't talk about it on the podcast, so you should talk about it. Oh, okay. So my new plan... Um, I read a book. Here comes yeah. the tangent. Here we go. I'm ready. Buckle up. I'm so ready. It was called something about cat sitter and murder. Hmm. Sounds exciting. Murder got the cat, cat got your murder cat sitters for murder. <laughs> I don't remember the name of it. That's funny. Oh, that's so funny. And it's some kind of like, you know, half cliche. Right. Anyway, there's a cat sitter in a book and mm -hmm. she goes and she feeds the cat. And then when the cat is done eating, she washes the dishes. Mm -hmm. And it, I know that people do this, but for some reason, reading about it in a book made me want to do it in real life. And it made me see, like, how easy it would be to keep more things clean. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like, if I feed the cat and I have a dirty spoon, just rinse the spoon, 
spend two seconds washing it and then dry it and then put it away. So it's never even in my dish drainer. Swanky. Uh, so I just started doing it and I do it for most of my things, but not everything. Mm. Um, Tupperware, I get annoyed washing. So I leave it for the dishwasher. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is my partner, by the way. We don't have a dishwasher. Yeah. No, I, I figured. Yeah. Well, for the people, for the good folks yeah. at home. For, for the people, people who don't know. <laughs> yes. For the good folks of YouTube. Yes. So, uh, anyway, it's been going on well. I have Stash to talk about, but you are holding a book. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm looking for a book. I'm sorry. Uh, I still have another whip, though. Oh, okay, yes. Talk, talk about your whips. Before we get too tangented. Yes. Uh, I found the book I was looking for. Okay. Try not to drop everything. Uh, I'm not actually talking about it. I'm just looking at crocheted edges. Ugh. Yes. <laughs> uh, when was it going to? Oh, here we go. I was going to get your opinion. Mm. So I set this guy aside. Excuse me. <laughs> and uh, I think I'm pretty sure I found the drop stitch in my lace part. Okay. I think that's what uh, this safety pin is. Hold on. What are these again? These are fingerless mitts. Uh, one of the Harry Potter, the uh, Gryffindor Gryffindor ones. Mitts of Gryffindor. Well, yeah, but I, I can't remember what they really called them. Oh, I'll figure it out. Yeah. It'll be in the show notes. By the way, show notes are down below and on Ravelry. Have a great time. Yes. I have it right here. I just need to look it up. It is not the mud blood cardigan. I feel like it's called Gryffindor mitts. Aren't they called the Gryffindor mitts? I don't think so. I maybe. I don't remember. Are you sure that's what they're called? Oh, yeah. Sword of Gryffindor mitts. I was wrong. I just remember that they were not actually red. And that's why I was, like, confused about them being Gryffindor. But mine are red, so whatever. Um, now I have no idea what to do about, like, bringing it up. Should I... I just... Should I just drop down to that area and try to figure out what the stitches are? Or should I just stuff a piece of yarn in it and hope that it never comes undone? <laughs> <laughs> so, if, uh, you can take a piece of yarn, weave it in, catch that stitch so that it doesn't unravel and then keep weaving. So you essentially have like a, a line of repair. Uh -huh. um, depending on the strength of the yarn, you can unply your yarn. I don't know how strong it is, but then, um, no. Okay. It's really fragile. Like I thought okay, about no, ripping like, the whole lace section down to that so that I can make sure I get my stitches right. And I don't think the yarn's going to take it. So that was kind of why I was hesitant to go that far. Yeah. Uh... It's really fragile. I mean, my tension is not crazy hard, but so uh, then... it's still break, just breaking the knitting it. Yeah. So then I would um, just do a repair line. Hmm. Or, you know, I have, so my, um, my wedding shawl that I made, the even star shawl, mm -hmm. um, there's a drop stitch that's still, that's being held by a safety pin and I've never fixed it. I just wear it with a safety pin because I don't care. You're at dorms. Um, also lazy. It's not that far down, so I might just drop the, that single stitch and see if I can get it. But I don't know if I'm going to make a big mess for myself because I'm not great at reading lace yarn. Yeah, what do you mean about dropping it? Uh, where the stitch is supposed to be uh, hanging on, drop that single stitch, let it ladder down to where it's supposed to be, and then do the stitches up. Oh, like two stitches? 
So you would be redoing two stitches? No, it's a single stitch down. Or is it two? Because it's, it's lace. Wait, what? Okay, hold on. Let me... Let me... The stitch that you currently have, I thought it was like down here and you're like holding it. That you it is, It's not that far down though. It's like four rows down maybe. Okay. Like there. Um, I don't really have a good solution. Okay. When I'm doing I'm... things like that, I'm just like, wee, <laughs> fudge it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, if nothing else, I need to make a decision and just get moving on it because I want to keep going on it and I'm tired of having it as a whip. So, um, yeah, you know, and I mean, I severely need fingerless mitts in some colors that are not red and pink, <laughs> though. Like, wait, so, these are red. I, that's what I mean. Because I, the ones I have, most of the, um, like the fingerless mints that you gave me, right. those are like mostly pink, uh, right. pink and orange. Uh -huh. um, most of my uh, winter gear is some shade of red or pink. Mm -hmm. I am not quite sure why, but that's just kind of how it's ended up. Right. But I prefer green and blue. So I need to make some fingerless mitts that are green or blue. And to do that, I need to get done with these red ones. Or frog it? Um, I really am excited about them. Like, I know I shouldn't be adding more red things, but I should have not bought red yarn then if that was what I was going to do. <laughs> so I'm still excited to, for being, for making these though, okay. you know? Yeah. So, um, which is another reason I want to figure out what I was doing and, stop dilly-dallying on it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Especially once the semester starts, I'm probably just going to be working on the straight knit stuff because that's plenty easy. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I forgot. I figured out, I I don't know if I was telling you on the podcast or if we were just chatting about it, but the whole um, purling with your yarn in the back. I don't remember, and we didn't talk about it on the podcast, so you should remind me. Okay. Um, so I was saying I was looking up... Um, Ways of tensioning yarn when you're purling, because I, I have a really bad uh, habit. Like, I, I pick up the worst ways of tensioning yarn. I mean, they're the worst for my actual hands. Uh, so I was like, I need to figure something else out. This is eventually going to be another repetitive stress problem, like your last tensioning problem, like mine. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was Googling that, and then I came across someone who was purling with their yarn in the back. And mm -hmm. it confused the heck out of me. Um, oh my god, yes. It was that thing you showed me, and it was like all the loop deeply, all this extra stuff, and then suddenly it came out the back. Yeah. Yeah. It was weird. Yeah. So I found out it's actually Norwegian. It's Norwegian knitting and purling. That's how they do it. Um, so I found a really cute uh, knitting uh, vlog, I guess. I don't know what you call them. They're sort of like instructional video guys. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember their name at the moment, so I'll have to put it in the show notes. Mm -hmm. um, but I was watching, it was Arnie and something or other. Arnie and Carlos! Yes, they're adorable. I oh love their God. tutorials, too. They're, 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 they're oh. super cute. Oh, my gosh. They have a series of knitted Christmas ornament balls. They have a book of them. That's cute. They are like the most adorable. I follow them on Instagram. One of them is making a dollhouse right now. Yeah, I saw. It looks anyway, cute. Anyway, they are super adorable. They have a Regia line of sock yarn. Oh, did they? Yeah, they have partnered with Regia for like their sock yarn color. So they have this whole line of sock. Anyway, they're super adorable. Yes. yes. Continue. We will. I will like them. Yes, thank you. Um, I just found them, so I was super excited, and I like their tutorial stuff. I've never um, watched any of their tutorials yet, so I'm super excited to look into this. Good. It's good, because they film it from two perspectives, at least the stuff I've watched so far. It's like from the front, and then a uh, bird's eye view, and he oh, goes cool. slow enough and repeats it enough that it's like followable. Mm -hmm. um, 
And you can also, it also has the option to change your speed. Not every video does. I like the ones where you can slow it down so that you can kind of, if you're having trouble, you can like, okay, you know, and it's a little bit more manageable. Mm -hmm. um, I'm anyway, so it's, it's Norwegian and uh, Arnie and Carlos, was it? Um, had a uh, sort of an easier way of teaching it. So it doesn't seem as weird. Okay. And I feel like even though it's kind of like sort of, you know, flash and, you know, your needles are going everywhere, um, that you could do it fast um, with practice. Yes. So I feel like it might be a little bit faster than the way that I purl currently. So we'll see. I've been kind of, since this has been my like practice project, I've been doing about half of my purl stitches with that technique and half of my regular. Good idea. Um, you know, so, so that my, my not too off and crazy from learning something new, you know, uh, but I, you know, mixing it up, learning new things. It's fun. Cool. Yeah. That's super cool. I know. So that, that's that. Uh, I think that's all I've got that I'm working on. Oh, I forgot I have another um, finished object. It's a metal thing, though. This is one of the okay. things I was learning. Um, so I was sort of, uh, my friend was running like a machine shop um, classes. Mm -hmm. um, this is a muzzle brake for a 22 rifle. So he was making okay. some. I'm going to pretend I know what that is. It's fine. It goes on the end of a gun. Yeah, okay. Um, I have no intention of using it. I just thought it was fun to make. And he already had the pattern uh, already and set up for something he was making. So it was easier for, to, for me to make one. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I this was uh, just a, like a complete, uh, cl completely solid uh, rod. Hmm. That uh, I drilled everything through and learned, you know, like little calipery stuff and how to oh, put bevels cool. on stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then he got it anodized for me. So I don't know if you can tell, but it's very dark green. Oh, cool. Yeah. I can't really tell. I mean, I can tell it's dark, but yeah. what what was the metal before? Uh, probably aluminum if they anodized it. I think it was aluminum or stainless. Hmm. I can't remember now. It's been a while because uh, the people who uh, he doesn't anodize stuff in his shop. Mm -hmm. Sorry, people, the helicopter. Um, so he had to send it out and they took so long that they ended up just doing it for free. <laughs> seriously, it's been like uh, three months or more now. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it probably just ended up, you know, behind a file somewhere and they're like, oh, no, you know, <laughs> you know how that goes. Yeah. Anyway. But that's a finished object, and it was a, a fun way of learning all the machines that, you know, it's a lot of, like, drill presses and all sorts of crazy big machines that are, you know, huge and metal shady. So, it was fun. Oh, cool. Again, probably never going to use it, but it was, it was a fun way to learn stuff. And it's a finished object, so it counts. And it can hold flowers? I could just... Run a chain through it and wear it like a necklace. Oh, Look at me. I'm a shooter. Pew, pew. <laughs> I'm a superior marksman. Pew, pew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, who knows? I have no idea. I'll be honest. Maybe I can put, like, some lenses in it. I have some lenses. Make it into, like, a little spyglass thing. Oh, oh. Yes. <laughs> I approve. <laughs> anyway, so sorry. I feel like I kind of interrupted something. No, you were I was going to move on to another section, and I should not okay. because you still had things. Yeah, well, things that I forgot, but go I'm for fine. it. We're all done now. All good. Um, so I was going to move on to stash things. I've actually been trying to not buy yarn, and but it seems like every time we podcast, I have yarn to tell you about that I bought. Uh, yeah, that seems like that's a true story. <laughs> okay, but this yarn I'm using. Okay. So that, that's my... 
That's my defense, and I'm sticking to it. All the other yarn, though. Okay, so, um, part of it was because I was trying to, like, put something together for an owl for Harry Potter Knit Crochet House Cup, so I was buying a couple of things, because I was like, I'll put these projects together that I want to make for a thing, and then I was like, ah, whatever, so I never ended up doing it, but anyway, so the first thing uh, I already kind of talked about, oh, I, but I had, did I, oh, I have to tell you about Wool House. W-O-O-L-H-A-U-S is a yarn store in Pasadena, and I love them. Oh, my gosh. I went yarn shopping there. The lady was so nice, and she let me wander around, and then she was like, oh, I don't want you to know, like, I'm not, like, ignoring you. If you need help or anything, just let me know, uh, but I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of letting you, you know, look at things. And I was like, yes, you are perfect. <laughs> You are what I have wanted my yarn experience to be at every shop. Right. And oh, and when I first walked in, she's like, oh, hi and welcome. And over here are the cotton yarns. And over this yarn starts the wool and it goes all the way over. And then we have some indie dyed yarns and our workhorse yarns are upstairs, like our Cascade 220 and stuff. And I was like, oh, you speak my language. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I'm down for the Cascade 220, not gonna lie. It has its uses. It and does. Its and, and like some of the people that are running the fancy shops poo poo it, it's like, well, then you're not getting that money, are you? No, you're not, because it felt like a dream. It's a great yeah. yarn if you need felting. And she had uh, their super wash for baby stuff. Yeah. You know, Cascade 220 yeah. super wash, baby yarn. Perfection. If you want. Uh, well, so anyway, uh, I bought a sweater quantity of the quarry for the sweater that I'm making that I already showed you, but I just wanted to hug my yarn. And, oh, it smells so good. Does it smell like sheepies? Yes. <laughs> you know, I've always wondered if I go up and like snorf a real sheep, if it smells like that or if it just smells like musty sheep. <laughs> we need to find out. <laughs> it's on my bucket list now. <laughs> Snorgle a sheep. Show title. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just one minute here. Snorkle a not snorkel. Snorgle. Thank you. I know I don't want snorkel. I don't want to snorkel a sheep. I want to snorkel the sheep. Okay. Thank you. No. Um, I wanna make some mittens. Oh, okay. So uh this is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. This is like a mustard color and the gray. Mm, the mustard doesn't look mustard. It looks kind of green to me. Oh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, that is not the color at all. Okay. Imagine that, but like brownie orange. Okay. Uh, it's not the right color at all. Uh, let's see, back here, no. It's gorgeous, it's tweedy. And lovely. Uh, I want to make the Flora Mitts by Skein Deer Knits. Um, Do you have a picture? I could find a picture, but it would probably take a while. Don't worry about it then. Yeah. But um, I bought these. Like I said, I was trying to, I was going to put an owl together and do swatches. And I just was like, Ugh. So that's why I bought them at the time. But that is the plan for these. That's also why they're caked. Because mm. that's what I was planning on doing. I was planning on immediately doing it. And that did not happen. Um, then I wanted to buy some Quince and Company yarn. I've never, uh, I've heard a lot of things about them. Good, like, wool company, uh, American wool. And, uh, so I got their shade card. Did I show you that? I don't think so. Oh. I have no idea where it is right now, or I'd get it. That's cool. Uh, anyway, that's the first shade card I've ever bought. And uh, I want to make Dad a scarf hmm. that's this patterned, um, it's called Il Barato. And um, it's like this 18, 18, 16th, it's like this old text, of, and it's got these patterns. Anyway, somebody translated it into knitting. It's super cool, and I want to make it for Dad. And I need four colors, and hmm. I thought I might use Quince and Company 
yarn. So I wanted to, mm. so that's what I got the shade card for. And then um, I wanted to make some mittens, mm. except this is the wrong weight. <laughs> so I don't know what I was doing when I ordered I don't I don't know I was out to lunch so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this um I could probably still make mittens and figure it out but that I wanted to do a white and a red there's these oh dear Ta-da. um there's this really cool pattern also by skein deer knits of a mittens with a reindeer and they look super cute. Um, but the other option, and this is what I might actually do with this. Um, I wanna make Terry and I stockings mm. for Christmas because we both have stockings. I just don't like, it's just one that I bought at a store, you know, it's just not anything great. So I wanna make one for me in white and red and one for Terry in white and green. So one thing that I do like about buying this yarn is that I do like, I got to see the colors. So uh, this is an undyed yarn, which I think is cool. And then uh, obviously this one is, this one's Peaks Fairy. And this one I think is Egret. Yeah, this is Egret and Peaks Fairy. So I do really like the colors. I'm not sure what these actual skeins of yarn are going to grow up to be. Or if they're going to sit in my stash until I figure it out. Because uh, I just made, I don't know what, what I was thinking. Um, what is the red closest to? Because, you know, like the, is it, is it pink? As pink as it looks? Or is no. it? No. Okay. I don't know why it looks pink in, I don't know. It's, it's a Christmas red. Okay. It's like, yeah, Christmas red. Vibrant, vibrant red. Okay. Yes. Yeah. A nice solid red color it's so funny the color is not showing up very well and it's, well it's it's, it's night and there's no natural light so uh so i will probably swatch with this oh this is chickadee which is their uh sport weight mm -hmm. the pattern is for dk weight that i was thinking about i don't know what planet i was on uh is it all wool can yes. you yes can you over dye oh yeah Okay. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that's actually kind of fun. Maybe I'll do that. Um, and then the other, the other option, though, is that I can hold, if I hold a double, I could probably get, because the, I don't want to knit a sport weight stocking. Like, that would take forever. Like, let's double this up and get this done. So I might uh, try that. You know, you might still be able to do it single strand if you pump your needle size up, like what I'm doing with this guy, you know, mm -hmm. like. So you end up with a really loose weave because it doesn't really matter. You know, it's the things when you put in a stocking, they're going to, you know, be kind of pointy and look weird anyway. That's yeah. always how a stocking is. Yeah. As long as it holds everything, you know, without there things falling go. through. Yeah. And, and then you'd be done faster too. But just depends on whether you'd like it enough though too. Yeah. I don't know. That is a project for later. I'm not... I'm doing, I'm in sweater land right now, so. Oh, yeah, I feel you. Um, but that's what I bought at Wool House. Oh, I bought the Brooklyn Tweed at Wool House. I bought Chickadee online, the Quilter hmm. Company yarn I bought online. Uh, yeah. That's all I bought. I think that's all I've got. Period. Okay. I have but. sewing to talk about. Oh, go for it. I made a skirt. Yay. Oh, that's cute. Look at you with a zipper even. Oh, that's super cute. Is it as tweety as it looks? Yes. It's a chambray fabric. Okay. I bought this to make a dress. And I looked at the pattern and the dress has like a, the skirt kind of goes like this, like a pencil skirt kind of. And mm -hmm. I don't wear pencil skirts because I dance and I need my legs to do this. Right. And uh, so I can't, 
it's not going to happen. So I don't, yeah. I might hack the pattern and you make this bottom with the top is mm. my idea. And then I was like, why don't I just make a zinnia skirt first? And then if I want to hack the pattern later to add a top on, I can do that. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, you can always do a pencil skirt with um, inserted a uh, Godot. What are they? Called? You know, it's like the little triangle of fabric. It's like a, sort of like a single pleat like that. Yeah, but I need to that like lift my leg like this because uh -huh. I dance at yeah. work. But you'd, you'd, you'd put two on the sides, one in the back, and I think it'd give you enough room. Uh, let me see if I'll see if I can find a pattern that shows what I'm talking about. It's not as crazy as it seems. People but will I'm use a like I'm not that like into pencil skirts or anything. It's not like I like have a burning desire to wear one. Yeah. So it's a fun. Uh, uh, the thing that I like about it is is a, a chance to put like a boring fabric and then a pop of color, like a little surprise whooshy de do that pops open when you move. Mm -hmm. But that would be fun. But if, you do, if you're really not into pencil skirts, I wouldn't bother. That's super cute. I would just make a ton of those. So, first time doing pleats? Yes? Huh? I was going to say, you could add the little, uh, add two little buttons on the front and make, you can make a uh, suspenders that go with it. <laughs> uh, it has pockets. Oh, yay. Yes. Like all skirts uh, and clothes should do. Nice. Yes. Um, and so what's nice about this is if I have a skirt pattern that does not have pockets, I can just use this. I, ha I now have a pocket pattern that I can insert into things, which is nice. Um, yes. Nice. First time doing pleats. Um, they look good. Thanks. I thought it was not that hard. I don't know. You follow the directions and suddenly they're there. So I don't know. Yeah. It's, Sorry if these are hard for you. I just didn't find it hard. No. It's tedious. It's not hard. It's tedious. And I did also, like, sew some the wrong way and have to pick them out. And there were several, like, <sighs> Rip, 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 that's yeah. I just sewed. I'm super glad I don't have to make kilts on the regular. Let's just put it that way. Because no, those night pleats are just, yeah. Well, I'm sure you would get good at it eventually. Oh, yeah. So, um, I discovered when I went searching for my zipper foot that I'm pretty sure I gave it all away. I had two uh -huh. sewing machines at some point, and I decided to get rid of one, and I'm pretty sure all of my, all of the feet were in that. So, I only have my regular foot for my little Kenmore Rink-A-Dink sewing machine. By the way, you can still make things on Rink-A-Dink little $50 sewing machines. FYI. Because I put in this zipper with a regular foot. Was it a good time? No. Does it look fine? Yes. <laughs> uh, but it also means I don't have a buttonhole foot. Oh, right. So uh, this is not technically done because I need to put a buttonhole here and sew on the button. You don't have to. You could put a hidden snap or a hook and eye closure, and it would do just the same. And I have hook and eye, so let's do that. But um, if you do hook and eye, either I'd use a big one or I'd use two so that yes. it uh, makes that your flap doesn't sort of peel away at the corners. Yes, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, probably what I will do is use a safety pin because we've already discussed this and me and safety pins. So it's fine. <laughs> you can just finish things. <laughs> <laughs> just make a pile like for when I visit you and I'll just start sewing buttons and, and okay. findings on. <laughs> I'll just throw things at you. Here, this one and this one. <laughs> You know, that's how you get things done. Uh, so I'm super happy with it. I haven't worn it yet uh, because it's winter. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I might put it on um, some leggings, wool leggings on and try it out, but I haven't yet. So it looks super cute and it fits like a dream. Wonderful. 
And I, I don't have a, it's a different style than I'm used to. For me, uh, I don't have any skirts like this. It's It pretty much sits on my high waist. Mm. Um, but it looks great. A little button-up shirt and a sweater. Yeah, I need more button-up shirts that go with stuff like that. Because I have a lot of really cute clothes that I essentially can't wear because I don't have, um, like, a proper button-up to go with it. Um, yep. It, it's hard finding button ups that I like, though, you know, like that aren't restricting of the movement and et cetera, and don't stain and, and et cetera. I have one more sewing. Go for it. I took a sewing class. Nice. For the first time in a number of years. And it was to make yoga pants. Oh, cool. So I want to make yoga pants with that, or want to make, um, Tights, Stretch knits? tights, what are they called? Leggings. Oh, I want to make yeah. leggings with that fabric I showed you, the desert fabric mm -hmm. from Spoonflower. Yeah. Uh, and so I thought it'd be good to take a class on working with stretch knits. Smart. And it was. It was a great class. Uh, I can't remember the name of the person who taught it, but she was super nice and friendly. She's a, a designer for simplicity. Um, oh. And she, like, was sewing in New York and that's how she was like making money but she was trying to be an opera singer but somebody just put her in the recommended her to the McCall's and then that's how she got started making patterns and anyway it was very interesting that she has cool. some great information about working with stretch knits and I got to use a serger for the first time which was wee, that was fun yeah um but also Definitely like major five times cut once because once you like if you're doing the cutting thing with the surging and then you, and you screw your fabric up it's like nope nope Start again. <laughs> yeah um but she also told me you know because i was like well i don't have these stitches on my machine mm -hmm. and i don't have a serger and i'm not going to get one so how would I do this at home? And she's like, you just use a small zigzag. Okay, great. Super. That's what I needed to know. So uh, I actually, <laughs> I haven't finished these. That's fine. So here's the jolly is the pattern. So this mm. is the pants that we were making. And mm -hmm. um, it has this little contrasting color uh, band right here, which is kind of fun. Um, I guess this pattern maker, they do a lot of dance costumes and, um, like ice skating, mm -hmm. I, uh, figure skating. Costumes. So, uh, it was interesting pattern and, uh, she brought like doctor that that's, um, tracing paper stuff that they put out over the thing before you sit down um, on the doctor's yeah. bench. Yeah. She brought that, and we traced with that on the pattern, uh, and it was great. It was really, it worked really well for tracing paper. Mm -hmm. um, so it, here they are. They're not very exciting. They're just yoga pants. They're inside out. Do they fit good? Oh yeah, they fit great. Nice. Because the first time I made pants, it was like a sweat pant pattern for a class. And there was only a couple of patterns we were allowed to pick, and uh, they ended up fitting, like, horribly. <laughs> like, I mean, Aww. they fit, but they looked horrible. They felt uncomfortable. I was like, well, it's a learning experience, but I'm not wearing these. And into the thrift store they went, you know. Yeah. I mean, they're good pants. they just not my thing. Uh, these um, have the, the back piece is actually two pieces. Hmm. And I guess it's supposed to make it easier to modify the butt area mm. if you need to put like extra black more fabric thing. right here yeah. over the apex of your butt. So uh, I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Or if you need to take away too, you know, like if you've got oh, a yeah. flat butt, a lot of stuff like gaps horribly. Sorry, I have the opposite problem. <laughs> My butt don't fit in these underwear. Well, you yeah. know. That should be the title. No. 
uh, anyway, uh, so that's that. That's not, that's, that's it. Had a great did time you put class. The, did you put the uh, contrast fabric? I haven't done the waistband yet. I okay. did get a contrast fabric uh, for the waistband. So um, I have to finish it at home, you know, like I was, I did all that on the regular machine. So I have to set up the machine and then play with working with stretch knits on my home machine. I did yeah. get the ballpoint needles. So Good. we'll see how it goes. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I think that's it for me and my making of things. We had a lot to talk about. You don't have a walking foot for your camera, do have, you? I don't have any feet. Okay. Um, I don't even know if they'd make it if the machine's cheap enough, but there might be one. And it really helps with knits. That's the only reason. Like, I know I seem like I harp on it a lot, but it makes life so much better, even for regular knitting, to have a walking foot. Like, I think all sewing machines should come standard with it. It's just works so much better to have feed dogs on the top and bottom. Mm -hmm. um, but especially with knits and stuff Any, or slippery fabrics, but yeah, but I don't know if they would make one for a uh, cheapo machine. So, yeah, you know, I was thinking about trying to figure it out and then I was like, uh, just do a quick Google and see if something pops up because sometimes there's, uh, you know, a foot for 20 bucks or something, you know, and if it makes your life that much easier, I would highly recommend at least giving it a shot. And I just, I, I'm quaffling between like, like I've said before, do I want to invest more money in this machine or do I want to save and buy a different machine? Um, if you... You know, as long as the thing doesn't spontaneously combust and it's still in good working order, when you decide to upgrade, it's still sellable. It's and the fact that, that it would have a walking foot, you know, makes it uh, a better used machine. Yeah. Yeah. So, but we'll see. I feel like Yeah. No harm in looking. You might find one cheap, you know. Yeah, that's true. Well, um, thanks yeah. for joining us, everybody. Yeah. Come and say hi and rad. Leave a comment. Hit like and subscribe. It helps other people find us. And yeah. Thanks, thanks for joining you. us. Bye. Bye. I'm putting my slippers on because my feet are cold.